So hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rich and as always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a little bit. So today, very quick video. I just wanted to give you a heads up. Um, I know that several people here on the YouTube channel are also students of mine over on Udemy and you might be taking my Intro to 3D Modeling course at Udemy. And if you are, you know that one of the products I talk about is PhotoScan from Agisoft. Well, something changed in the last couple of weeks, shows you how much I've been paying attention. PhotoScan's name has changed, so it's no longer PhotoScan, it's now called Metashape. It's still produced by Agisoft, and they've done some improvements, they've done some upgrades, and they've made some claims that they've actually sped processing up if you're using your own desktop. They're also offering cloud modeling now. So they have the professional edition still, and they also have the standard edition for those of you who are just starting out. So I just wanted to pull this up really quick. So I'm gonna take a look over at the screen right now. And I've also got Skywatch up, and I'll tell you about that in just a moment. But first, we're gonna pull up the new icon called Metashape, and this is from Agisoft. So, Metashape looks just like PhotoScan. So I'm using the standard edition. The standard edition is limited. It doesn't have all the tools and all the export options that the Pro Edition has, but it's also available at a huge price savings. Now, for people who are just starting out with 3D modeling, I don't personally recommend going out and buying one of the big names yet. I suggest that you try out their tutorials, you try out their um, their demo subscriptions, whether they be 14 days or a month, and that you really give each product um, its own trial period separate from other products. So, so don't download all the products at once. Try one out at a time so that you can really get the most out of the experience. And especially if you're new to 3D modeling, you're going to want to do some flights to make some models first. So. Several weeks ago, I was down in Casa Grande, as you know, if you've been following along with this channel. And one of the things that I did while I was down there was I actually pulled together a map of the Sundance RV Resort uh, area. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this one. Now, this was made with PhotoScan, and now we've got Metashape. So I'm clicking on that, and there I go. There is my aerial model of the property. So I have 331 cameras, and actually down here on the bottom, you can open up your camera's preview window so that you can see all of the images that you shot that are going to be going together into your 2D or 3D model. Now, this particular property was over 81 acres. If you can't tell, look right over here, and we've got this tiny little swimming pool that's actually not tiny. It's, it's pretty massive. Now... When I rendered this model, it's not looking great. And the reason why it's not looking great is I rendered this on the lowest quality settings possible just because I wanted to speed along the initial model to see if I was satisfied with the camera coverage. So I need to go back through this particular model and actually run it um, at a higher resolution and run it with, uh, with the cameras being at higher quality as well. So this is just to give you an idea. So as you can see, 81 acres, that's a lot of space. Those are all different RVs, and those are also park model homes. And just for fun, let's zoom right on in here. And this item right here, which is fuzzy, and once again, that's because of the low quality area in the set, but that's my Airstream. So my Airstream parked at Sundance while I was doing the work. Also, I'm going to click on this, that little orange cluster of pixels right there is actually my helipad and that shadow right there is me. So I'll be rerunning this one and I think what I'll do is I'll tag this in at the end of the video so that you can see a higher quality version. But that's probably going to lock my computer up for several hours today. So one of the things that you should know, um, if you're starting out in 3D modeling and you're just getting into it and you want to do it on your desktop, I'm going to give you a heads up, unless you have a very, very high-end machine, rendering these 3D models is going to take quite a while. It's a long process. That's why uh, uploading to the cloud and having these vendors do the rendering for you might save you a lot of time in the long run, but I wouldn't suggest worrying about that 
until you're looking at some really substantial clients who have high-end demands and high-end needs because the price of a lot of these 3D modeling software packages is pretty extreme. You're getting into the thousands of dollars. And if you don't have customers that you're working with yet to do these 3D models, why would you be spending all that up front? So the whole reason why I got the standard edition of PhotoScan personally was because of the reasonable price for the standard edition. And I can still demo 3D models and I can export my 3D models to Sketchfab if I need to show those models to a potential client, friends, family, whoever it might be. Um, it's a pretty reasonable solution at $179. So I talk a lot more about that in my class on Udemy. So you can head on over to Udemy. Links are down in the show notes and you can check that out if you'd like to. So I'm going to stop this video in just a moment. I'm going to re-render this and we'll see if we have a better looking model that I can show off at the end of this video for you. But so I just wanted to give you the heads up. Uh, Photoscan is now Metashape and still made by Agisoft. And if you believe everything that you read on a website and on release notes, this thing is going to be a lot faster. And I'll tell you about that at the end of this video. So one of their examples they had was a project that ran 19 hours previously. And supposedly now that project was cut down to nine hours for the same quality. That's awesome. That's amazing. And so I'm going to render a higher quality version of this one and we'll see if we're satisfied with it and if we can see the differences. So I'm actually going to reprocess this from the beginning so that I'll have both to compare to show you later in this video. All right, we're going to take a break and then we'll come back with a final product to look at. Welcome back everybody and for you you've just had a very short break in between scenes with a little bit of video there and for me it's been a couple of hours now so um, I went through and I went ahead and redid this particular model so I'm looking over on the screen here real quick and I, I can see some substantial improvements in this model and I did not go full bore on this so what I mean by that let me grab my little notepad here and the workflow for doing this um, is pretty straightforward. First, you import the images, which I did. Um, the next thing you do is you align the photos. After you align your photos, you build your dense cloud, uh, you build your mesh, and you build your texture. And in each of these steps, you can change the quality. So what I did here, when I align the photos, um, I align the photos on high. And doing that, it was 331 images. We're talking about over 800, uh, um, I'm sorry, not 800, over 81 acres. There we go. Um, and so I lined the photos on high. That was 50 minutes of time aligning the photos alone. So if you get a bigger project or if you were flying lower, you'd have more images. But the more images you have, the longer this is going to take even just starting at the alignment portion. Um, the next step was building the dense cloud. I decided to go with low on this because doing uh, the medium dense cloud, and you can also do a high dense cloud as well, but doing the medium was going to take over one hour and 38 minutes. That's what the uh, that's what uh, Metashape told me. And um, usually when Metashape gives you an estimate of time, it does take longer than that. Always seems to be the way lately in programs. Um, they always tell you it's going to take you know, 40 minutes to install this, and instead it's an hour and 20 minutes, but somehow their clock magically slows down. All right, after building the dense cloud, I built the mesh from the dense cloud, and I went with the face count on high, and that was only seven minutes of time. And then finally I built the texture, and there's several ways to build the texture, and that's experimentation on what you'd like out of it. Um, I did the adaptive ortho mosaic, and that was two minutes of time. So in the end, um, this is a little faster than what I remember with, uh, with the original photo scan. So I think Agisoft is being pretty uh, genuine when they say that they've improved 
the modeling speed, so they probably changed some things in how this um, how this deals with the images. Now, once again, whoops, I'm sliding that around, but um, this is over 80 acres uh, that was shot, and this was a um, two battery flight, and I did fly it at a higher elevation so that it would uh, shorten the time. The lower the elevation, um, the closer you are to what you're modeling, and that's gonna give you better results without a doubt. In the case of what I was doing, I was just doing a 2D model um, for these guys. They didn't need a 3D model, but we can still look at this as a 3D and meta shape, so I'm just dragging this, and we can actually zoom on in. Now, once again, I didn't have this uh, at any particular angle. I was using DJI's Ground Station Pro, and so I had this shooting straight down, so 90 degrees down. And um, so we didn't get the sides of the buildings very well at all. Looking straight down as a uh, ortho map or ortho model, this does look really good. And my airstream is much more discernible from this one, uh, as I showed you in the last one. So there's the airstream with the solar panels on it. There is my helipad and my shadow or myself, not quite sure which, and the truck as well. So. I can go back through and put everything on high here, so I could do the photo alignment on high. I could build a higher uh, resolution point cloud. Um, we can go ahead and do a um, higher setting on the uh, mesh and a higher setting on the texture. So I think this came out very well for me, and um, I think Metashape is a good improvement so far from PhotoScan. So I'll keep you guys up to date the next time I use this on a project. I will um, make sure to share it with you. I'd also like to know if you could leave comments down below. I'd really appreciate it. Would you like to see a full start to finish using Agisoft's uh, Metashape? Do you think that this would be worth a larger class? If so, let me know because I'm looking for some new things to do on Udemy. I know that I'm, I've already got a couple of plans ready, but I was thinking that this would be very interesting, especially since um, Agisoft has now come out with this new version, Metashape, that uh, there might be some more tools in here um, that would be valuable to you. So let me know, leave a comment down below, and we can talk through another one of these projects down the road. Finally, I'm gonna leave you with one more thing. We're gonna have a little fun here. Um, you can also do animations. So I'm just gonna do a vertical animation here, and let's go ahead and say okay to that. And now, here we go. So it almost gives you the feeling of flight, and you can actually export this um, outside of Metashape. You can save this, and let's go ahead and pause that, and let's go ahead and save that. We're gonna save that to the Sundance Maps. Actually, let's save that to this class. So Final Cut Drive number two, my YouTube libraries, and Metashape. And let's call this Flight Over Meta. And there we go. I'm going to save that video. It's going to be in MJPEG. Let's see. Compression. And do we want... We can do it 16 by 9. So let's go ahead and do it 16 by 9. And there we go so this is going to take a moment as you can see so every step of the process when you're doing modeling 3d or 2d is actually time consuming so you're going to have to hang in there with it one of my recommendations as you're watching this render here one of my recommendations is that you do have a standalone system to do your 3d modeling i have another computer sitting off over to the right but it's not set up for doing these recordings Running these large-scale models on my iMac is sometimes painful. So I would suggest no matter what vendor you're using, if it's Pix4D, um, if it's Agisoft, if it's uh, one of the others out there, uh, read about what the requirements are, what they want to see as the basic minimums for the computer that you're using and then tell yourself that you need to actually go above and beyond that because the minimums that they give you are minimums. We're gonna do one more here. Uh, we did the vertical, I'm gonna do the horizontal now and we're gonna say okay to that. And let's give this a quick play. So now we're actually looking at it 
um, from a side view. That's kind of interesting there, and I'm going to go ahead and stop that. We're going to save that one as well because I'm going to put both of these into the video. So let me see. Um, And you'll see these showing up in the video as well. So I'm going to hit save to this. And once again, I'm going to do the 16 by 9. So here we go. And say OK to it. And there goes that one. So it doesn't take too long to generate um, this video visual. And you know this is going to be something that you can show off to clients as well. It is a very unique perspective of their properties, uh, in this case, an RV resort and just start imagining use your own imagination on what you could use this for in a demo for your own clients showing off their larger properties once again this was 81 acres pretty crazy all right everybody i'm gonna let you go with that and yeah i always overrun on the videos i'm sorry i over explain things but hopefully that helps you out leave comments and questions down in the show notes below and I will respond to you. And if you're interested in seeing more on building something like this, let me know down below and we'll see what we can do about putting something together in the really near future. Have an awesome rest of the week, everybody.